Hello and welcome to the first video of the lesson, Insurance Documentation. Here we will learn about various documents and their importance in an insurance contract. We will also discuss the exact nature of each form, how to fill them and the reasons for calling specific information. Here we will cover the following concepts. The insurance company comes to know the customer and his or her insurance needs from the documents submitted by the customer. Such documents also help the insurer to understand the risk better. The first stage of documentation is basically the proposal form through which the insured informs who the person is, what kind of insurance he or she needs, details of what he or she wants to insure, and for what period of time is the insurance needed? These details help determine the monetary value of the subject matter of insurance and all material facts connected with the proposed insurance. Proposal form is filled by the proposer for furnishing all material information required by the insurer in order to enable him decide whether to accept or refuse to grant the insurance and in the event of acceptance of the risk, to determine the rates, terms and conditions of the cover to be granted. Proposal form contains information which are useful for the insurance company to accept the risk offered for insurance. Proposal forms are printed by insurers, usually with the insurance company's name, logo, address and the type of insurance that it is used for. It is customary for insurance companies to add a printed note in the proposal form. Insurance companies usually add a declaration at the end of the proposal form to be signed by the proposer. This ensures that the insured takes the pain to fill up the form accurately and has understood the facts given therein so that at the time of a claim there is no scope for disagreements on account of misrepresentation of facts. This also serves to stress the main principle of utmost good faith and disclosure of all material facts on the part of the insured. The declaration converts the common law principle of utmost good faith to a contractual duty of utmost good faith. Now let us discuss the elements of a proposal. First, proposer's full name. Second, Proposer's address and contact details. Third, proposer's profession, occupation, or business. In some cases, like health and personal accident insurance, the proposer's profession, occupation, or business are of importance as they could have a material bearing on the risk. Fourth, details and identity of the subject matter of insurance. The proposer is required to clearly state the subject matter that is proposed for insurance. Fifth, sum assured. It indicates limit of liability of the insurer under the policy and has to be indicated in all proposal forms. Sixth, previous and present insurance. The proposer is required to inform the details about his previous insurances to the insurer. This is to understand his insurance history. Details of current insurance is also required to be disclosed to ensure that the principle of contribution is applied so that the insured is indemnified and does not gain or profit due to multiple insurance policies for the same risk. Seventh, loss experience. The proposer is asked to declare full details of all losses suffered by him or her. This will give the insurer information about the subject matter of insurance and how the insured has managed the risk in the past. Eighth, Declaration by the insured The proposal form includes a declaration by the insured that the answers are true and accurate and he agrees that the form shall be the basis of the insurance contract. And ninth, Record of all oral information the insurance company has a duty to record all the information received, even orally, 
which the agent has to keep in mind by way of follow-up. Thank you. In this next video of the lesson, Insurance Documentation, you will learn about some more proposal forms. In case of adverse medical history in the proposal form, the insured person has to complete a detailed questionnaire related to diseases such as diabetes, hypertension, chest pain, coronary insufficiency or myocardial infarction. These have to be supported by a form completed by a consulting physician. The intermediary has a responsibility towards both parties, that is the insured and the insurer. An agent or a broker who acts as the intermediary between the insurance company and the insured has the responsibility to ensure that all material information about the risk is provided by the insured to the insurer. IRDAI regulation states that an insurer or its agent or other intermediary shall provide all material information in respect of a proposed cover to the prospect to enable the prospect to decide on the best cover that would be in his or her interest. After filling the proposal form, if it is accepted, then the proposals are processed by the insurer with speed and efficiency and all decisions thereof are communicated in writing within a reasonable period. As per IRDAI guidelines, the insurer has to process the proposal within 15 days' time. The agent is expected to keep track of these timelines, follow up internally and communicate with the prospect or insured as and when required by way of customer service. This entire process of scrutinizing the proposal and deciding about acceptance is known as underwriting. Thank you. In this next video of the lesson, Insurance Documentation, we will learn about Prospectus. Here we will cover the following concepts. A prospectus is a document issued by the insurer or on his behalf to the prospective buyers of insurance. It is usually in the form of a brochure or leaflet and serves the purpose of introducing a product to prospective buyers. The prospectus of any insurance product should clearly state the scope of benefits, the extent of insurance cover, and explain in a clear manner the warranties, exceptions, and conditions of the insurance cover. The allowable riders on the product should also be clearly stated with regard to their scope of benefits. Also, the premium related to all the riders put together should not exceed 30% of the premium of the main product. Other important information which a prospectus should disclose include any differences in covers and premium for different age groups or for different entry ages. Renewal terms of the policy. Terms of cancellation of policy under certain circumstances. The details of any discounts or loading applicable under different circumstances. The possibility of any revision or modification of the terms of the policy, including the premium. Any incentives to reward policyholders for early entry, continued renewals, favorable claims experience, etc., with the same insurer. And a declaration that all health insurance policies are portable, which means that these policies can be renewed with any other insurer who offers similar cover with the same benefits that he would have enjoyed had he continued with the existing insurer. Thank you. In this next video of the lesson, Insurance Documentation, we will learn about the premium receipt. Here we will cover the following concepts. Premium is the consideration or amount paid by the insured to the insurer for insuring the subject matter of insurance under a contract of insurance. When the premium is paid by the customer to the insurer towards premium, the insurer is bound to issue a receipt. As per Insurance Act, premium is to be paid in advance 
before the start of the insurance cover. This is an important provision, which ensures that only when the premium is received by the insurance company, a valid insurance contract can be completed and the risk can be assumed by the insurance company. Section 64 VB of the Insurance Act 1938 is a special feature of non-life insurance industry in India. It states that no insurer shall assume any risk unless and until the premium is received in advance or is guaranteed to be paid or a deposit is made in advance in the prescribed manner. When an insurance agent collects a premium on a policy of insurance on behalf of an insurer, he shall deposit with or dispatch by post to the insurer the premium so collected in full without deduction of his commission within 24 hours of the collection, excluding bank and postal holidays. It also states that the risk may be assumed only from the date on which the premium has been paid in cash or by check. When the premium is tendered by postal or money order or check sent by post, the risk may be assumed on the date on which the money order is booked or the check is posted as the case may be. Any refund of premium, which may become due to an insured on account of the cancellation of policy or alteration in its terms and conditions or otherwise, shall be paid by the insurer directly to the insured, by a crossed or order check or by postal or money order, and a proper receipt shall be obtained by the insurer from the insured. The premium to be paid by any person proposing to take an insurance policy or by the policyholder to an insurer may be made in cash, any recognized banking negotiable instrument such as checks, demand drafts, pay order, banker's checks drawn on any scheduled bank in India, postal money order, credit or debit cards, bank guarantee or cash deposit, internet, e-transfer, direct credits via standing instruction of proposer or the policyholder or the life insured through bank transfers or any other method of payment as may be approved by the authority from time to time. As per IRDAI regulations, in case the proposer opts for premium payment through net banking or credit or debit card, the payment must be made only through net banking account or credit or debit card issued in the name of the proposer. Thank you. In this next video of the lesson, Insurance Documentation, we will learn about policy document. Here we will cover the following concepts. The policy is a formal document which provides an evidence of the contract of insurance. This document has to be stamped in accordance with the provisions of the Indian Stamp Act 1899. IRDAI regulations for protecting policyholders' interest specified that a health insurance policy should contain the name or names and address or addresses of the insured and any other person having insurable interest in the subject matter. Full description of the persons or interest insured the sum insured under the policy person and or peril wise. Period of insurance. Perils covered and exclusions. Any excess or deductible applicable. Premium payable and where the premium is provisional subject to adjustment, the basis of adjustment of premium. Policy terms, conditions and warranties. Action to be taken by the insured upon occurrence of a contingency likely to give rise to a claim under the policy. The obligations of the insured in relation to the subject matter of insurance upon occurrence of an event giving rise to a claim and the rights of the insurer in the circumstances. Any special conditions. Provision for cancellation of the policy on grounds of misrepresentation, fraud, non-disclosure of material facts, or non-cooperation of the insured. 
the address of the insurer to which all communications in respect of the policy should be sent, the details of the riders, if any, and details of grievance redressal mechanism and address of ombudsman. Every insurer has to inform and keep the insured informed periodically on the requirements to be fulfilled by the insured regarding lodging of a claim arising in terms of the policy and the procedures to be followed by him to enable the insurer to settle a claim early. Thank you. In this next video of the lesson, Insurance Documentation, we will learn about conditions and warranties. Here we will cover the following concepts. A condition is a provision in an insurance contract which forms the basis of the agreement. One of the standard conditions in most insurance policies states, If the claim be in any respect fraudulent, or if any false declaration be made or used in support thereof, or if any fraudulent means or devices are used by the insured or anyone acting on his behalf, to obtain any benefit under the policy, or if the loss or damage be occasioned by the willful act or with the connivance of the insured, all benefits under this policy shall be forfeited. The claim intimation condition in a health policy may state, Claim must be filed within certain days from date of discharge from the hospital. However, waiver of this condition may be considered in extreme cases of hardship where it is proved to the satisfaction of the company that under the circumstances in which the insured was placed, it was not possible for him or any other person to give such notice or file claim within the prescribed time limit. A breach of condition makes the policy voidable at the option of the insurer. Warranties are used in an insurance contract to limit the liability of the insurer under certain circumstances. Insurers also include warranties in a policy to reduce the hazard. With a warranty, the insured undertakes certain obligations that need to be complied within a certain period of time and also during the policy period and the liability of the insurer depends on the insured's compliance with these obligations. Warranties play an essential role in managing and improving the risk. A warranty is a condition expressly stated in the policy which has to be literally complied with for validity of the contract. Warranty is part of the policy document. If a warranty is not fulfilled, the policy becomes voidable at the option of the insurers even when it is clearly established that the breach has not caused or contributed to a particular loss. Thank you. In this next video of the lesson, Insurance Documentation, we will learn about endorsements. If certain terms and conditions of the policy need to be changed at the time of issuance, it is done by setting out the amendments or changes through a document called endorsement. It is attached to the policy and forms part of it. The policy and the endorsement together make up the contract. Endorsements may also be issued during the currency of the policy to record changes or amendments. Whenever material information changes, the insured has to advise the insurance company who will take note of this and incorporate the same as part of the insurance contract through the endorsement. Endorsements required under a policy relate to Variations or changes in some insured. Change of insurable interest by way of taking a loan or mortgaging the policy to a bank. Extension of insurance to cover additional perils or extension of policy period. Change in risk. For example, change of destinations in case of an overseas travel policy. Transfer of property to another location cancellation of insurance, and change in name or address. Thank you. 
In this next video of the lesson, Insurance Documentation, we will learn about Interpretation of Policies. Here we will cover the following concepts. Contracts of insurance are expressed in writing and the insurance policy wordings are drafted by the insurers. These policies have to be interpreted according to certain well-defined rules of construction or interpretation which have been established by various courts. The most important rule of construction is that the intention of the parties must prevail and this intention is to be looked for in the policy itself. If the policy is issued in an ambiguous manner, it will be interpreted by the courts in favor of the insured and against the insurer on the general principle that the policy was drafted by the insurer. Policy wordings are understood and interpreted as per the following rules. An express or written condition overrides an implied condition except where there is inconsistency in doing so. In the event of a contradiction in terms between the standard printed policy form and the typed or handwritten parts, the typed or handwritten parts is deemed to express the intention of the parties in the particular contract and their meaning will overrule those of the original printed words. If an endorsement contradicts other parts of the contract, the meaning of endorsement will prevail as it is the later document. Clauses in italics override the ordinary printed wording where they are inconsistent. Clauses printed or typed in the margin of the policy are to be given more importance than the wording within the body of the policy. Clauses attached or pasted to the policy override both marginal clauses and the clauses in the body of the policy. Printed wording is overridden by a typewritten wording or wording impressed by an inked rubber stamp. Handwriting takes precedence over typed or stamped wording. And finally, the ordinary rules of grammar and punctuation are applied if there is any ambiguity or lack of clarity. Next, we will understand the construction of policies. The principal rule of construction is that the intention of the parties of the contract is most important. That intention must be gathered from the policy document itself and the proposal form, clauses, endorsements, warranties, etc. attached to it that forms part of the contract. Next, we will learn about meaning of wordings. The meaning to be used for words is the meaning that the ordinary man in the street would construe. On the other hand, words that have a common business or trade meaning will be construed with that meaning unless the context of the sentence indicates otherwise. Where words are defined by laws, the meaning of that definition will be used as per laws. Many words used in insurance policies have been the subject of previous legal decisions which are ordinarily applied. Technical terms must always be given their technical meaning unless there is an indication to the contrary. Thank you. In this last video of the lesson, Insurance Documentation, we will learn about Renewal Notice, Anti-Money Laundering and KYC Guidelines. Most of the non-life insurance policies are issued on annual basis. There is no legal obligation on the part of the insurers to advise the insured that his policy is due to expire on a particular date. However, as a matter of courtesy and healthy business practice, insurers issue a renewal notice in advance of the date of expiry, inviting renewal of the policy. Now let us understand the concept of money laundering. Money laundering is the process by which criminals transfer funds to conceal the true origin and ownership of the proceeds of criminal activities. By this process, money can lose its criminal identity and appear valid. Criminals attempt to use financial services, including banks and insurance, to launder their money. They make transactions by using false identities, for example, by purchasing some form of insurance and then managing to withdraw that money 
and then disappearing once their purpose is served. The anti-money laundering guidelines issued by IRDAI indicate suitable measures to determine the true identity of customers requesting for insurance services, reporting of suspicious transactions, and proper record-keeping of cases involving or suspected of involving money laundering. Finally, let us understand what KYC guidelines are. According to the Know Your Customer or KYC guidelines, every customer needs to be properly identified by collection of the documents such as address verification, recent photograph, financial status, and purpose of insurance contract. The agent is therefore required to collect documents at the time of bringing in business to establish the identity of customers. In case of individuals, collect full name, address, contact numbers of insured with ID and address proof, PAN number and full bank details for NEFT purposes. In case of corporates, collect Certificate of Incorporation, Memorandum and Articles of Association, Power of Attorney to Transact the Business, and Copy of PAN Card. In case of partnership firms, collect Registration Certificate if registered, Partnership Deed, Power of Attorney granted to a partner or an employee of the firm to transact the business on its behalf, and proof of identity of such person. In case of trusts and foundations, the requirements are similar to that of partnership firms. It is important to note that this information also helps in cross-selling of products and is a helpful marketing tool. Here is a quick look at the topics covered in this chapter. Thank you.